What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at the 8-bit Do Arcade Stick and I'm going to be showing you how to use it with the Arcade One systems. So first things first, taking a look at the picture of the Arcade Stick, what you're going to want to do is put this uh, knob right here over to the X. That would be X for X input, which is what, you know, the Microsoft uh, Xbox controllers use. All right, then this next knob here simply changes it from acting from the joystick acting as a left stick, a D-pad, or the right stick on the controller. Uh, typically, we're going to keep it on DP like that. All right. Uh, the other thing to know is on the back side over here, there's going to be a small latch that opens, and in there you're going to find the USB receiver for RF or 2.4 gigahertz, and that's what we're going to be using. You can also use uh, a cable connection with this. You can connect it with a cable, and you can do um, Bluetooth, but we're going to be doing 2.4 gigahertz RF. All right, so plug that into the computer, and then when you have the um, the switch over to the X, it's going to sync up automatically, and you have to make sure that this uh, switch here is over to 2.4G, all right, not BT for Bluetooth. So very important, this one to the right and this one to the right as well, okay? Then if we go over here to Windows and you open up USB game controllers, if you don't have this shortcut, you can go over here to the start menu and if you type, if you type in USB and then you start to type in controllers, uh, this will pop up and you can click on it. And then right now, I'm gonna go ahead and plug mine in and turn it on. And there you go. It appears just as an Xbox 360 controller, which is great. Um, so, so far, so good. That's what you want. Now, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and download their software. If you just type in, I mean, it's here on the website. Let's see, support maybe. Uh, there you go, Ultimate Software. Go ahead and get that. Windows downloaded. If you have my systems going forward, it will be included already. If you go to this PC, utilities, there it is, Abito Ultima Software. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description as well to my version of it, which simply means I'll include my profile on there. So the profile is over here in the config, arcade stick, X input. There's my profile for my systems. And uh, you, know, you can actually share these between people, so it's pretty cool. Um, then here's just a screenshot of what my profile looks like. All right, so we're going to talk about that a little bit right now. Um, so let's go ahead and start up the, the uh, software. And it's going to ask you to connect it with the USB cable that was included in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there you go, it detected the joystick and it brings up the GUI right here. Now, I already configured mine, so you, that's why you see all of this stuff, but normally, this is what yours is gonna look like at first. So what you would wanna do is you wanna change a few things around. And this is similar to my other video on the Mayflash F300 and F500. Um, basically what you're doing is you're changing the positioning of a few buttons so that it matches the layout that I use, which is basically gonna end up giving you the correct like punches and kicks for a game like Street Fighter. So if you take a look at this screenshot here, you have, uh, this just means like, for example, this is right bumper, right, originally. And this is showing you that that has been remapped to now be left bumper. And this one is normally left bumper and it has now been remapped to be left trigger. So it's really cool because you can remap this as much as you want. Now, P1 and P2, I got kind of excited about those because they're nice big buttons and I was planning on making P1 the equivalent of the little start button over here and P2 the equivalent of the select button. Unfortunately, you cannot map anything to those two buttons. So I just ended up making those the equivalent of the A and B buttons. So you can still use P1 to like select systems and games and P2 to like go backwards in the menu. Now, if you have one of my systems, as I've, I already said, um, going forward, this is all gonna be included or you can just download it from the description. Um, so you won't have to actually manually make the profile because it'll be included and you can actually come here, 
select Arcade One, it'll load up the profile, you click on Sync Controller, and that's it, you're ready to go after that. But if you wanna make it from scratch, say you go back to default, you know, it's pretty simple. You would click on the, over here, you can click on like, let's say left trigger, and then over here you click on whatever you wanna remap that left trigger to. So let's say A, let's say you wanna remap X to like A, you do it like that, and once you're done, you click on Sync Controller. At that point, it's gonna ask you if you wanna save the profile, and you can do that. You can give it a name and a description, hit create, and it's gonna sync that profile to the controller as well as save it as a profile. I'm not gonna do that right now. That's basically what I did when I created this one. So again, you can just go here, arcade one, boom, it loads the profile I created with the necessary changes, and then you click on sync to controller. It'll give you this message here, you hit OK, and then like I told you to go ahead and close the program. And then what you're gonna notice if you go back to USB game controllers is that it's there's two things there now because your, the cable is still plugged into the PC. So you wanna unplug the cable if you're gonna be using the controller wirelessly. And now it says 8-bit though receiver. You don't want that. So you wanna go ahead and remove the receiver and reinsert it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And you may have to toggle that one switch that says, you know, S. Uh, you might wanna put it on off and then put it back on S again. And there you go, now you're back to normal. It says controllers Xbox, uh, controller Xbox 360 but it has the new configuration that we just flashed to it with that profile, okay? So at this point, you're basically good to go. And what's gonna happen now is, you know, you go to, let's go back to that picture. You know, you have your select button, you have your start button. To exit games, you hold select and you press start, just like you do with an Xbox controller. Um, P1 and P2, again, are gonna mimic A and B. And if I show you, uh, you know, in, in X pattern, if I load up like a Street Fighter profile, so now you can see that if I press this button right here, that's that button there. If I press this one, is that button there? If I press this one, is that button there? Which is perfect because A, B, C are the three punches. So light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, and then the kick right here corresponds to that, this one to that one, this one to this one. And now those are gonna be your low kick, medium kick, and high kick, okay? And then this one will be your left trigger, this one will be your right trigger, all right? So I changed it from the default just so that it would line up with those buttons as you see there. But other than that, it's basically as simple as downloading the software if you have an older version of my machine prior to let's say today because this is when I'm implementing this. Um, again, I'll leave a link in the description. You can just download it, you can extract it. You'll have a file like this one and you can just go ahead and drag that over to your utilities folder. You can put it anywhere, but you know, put it over here in utilities, drag it over. And when you go inside, you have the software there. Again, you double click. It asks you to connect the USB cable. You connect the USB cable, it shows up. You go over here to profile, select Arcade One, click sync, and you're done. Remember when you unplug the cable that it's gonna be showing up wrong as an 8-bit Duke receiver. So you unplug the receiver, plug it back in. Might have to toggle that switch to off then back to S and it'll show up as an Xbox controller. At that point, you're done. Now, of course, you can also use a wired. If you use a wired, do not plug in the wireless receiver. Just plug in the cable only. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this one. If you guys liked the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the next one.